There is no doubt that China is emerging as a regional powerhouse. In the past 30 years, its GDP has grown from just $177 billion to $12.2 trillion. But there is a flaw in China's model of growth. Demographic data shows that the country is now facing a severe decline in population. China's fertility rate is dropping, people are living longer, and the workforce is shrinking. For a country whose young workforce is the backbone of its economy, these demographic trends are harbingers of social, economic, and political disaster. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. In cybersecurity there are two types of people, those who have been hacked and those who will be. NordVPN encrypts your user data, making it unreadable to hackers, governments and ISP operators. So prepare for what's next, not what's last. Just go to nordvpn.com slash Caspian Report, you'll get a 70% discount on the 3 year plan and if you use the promo code Caspian Report, you'll get an additional month free. During the second half of the 20th century, China's population was growing at a breakneck pace, averaging at 20% from 1950 to 1978. The unsustainable growth drove policymakers in Beijing to institute population control measures in the 1970s, including the infamous one child policy. At the same time, improvements in healthcare increased life expectancy across China. The combination of population control and greater life expectancy drove down the fertility rate, or births per woman. For the Chinese leadership, the program had achieved its intended objective. Now, however, the long-term effects of the population control policies are catching up with the state. China is aging at a faster rate than most societies. The total fertility rate dropped from 6.3 in 1965 to 1 1.6 in 2017, below the replacement rate of 2.1 children per woman, which is required to maintain population levels. Some academics refute the official number and argue that the fertility rate has hovered around an average of 1.1 since 2010. Either way, according to the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, the country will see a negative population growth as soon as 2030. The Chinese population will peak at 1.4 billion in 2029, then steadily shrink to 1.2 billion by 2065. Such a severe drop will undoubtedly produce new challenges for the Beijing government, and some effects are already visible. In the last decade, the Ministry of Education closed more than a hundred thousand primary schools nationwide, an indication that the proportion of the youth is shrinking. But demographic decline is much more than just the closure of schools. China's working population is expected to drop by 9% from 2015 to 2035 and 20% in 2050. That amounts to a total loss of 200 million people, which is more than the working age populations of all of Western Europe. Now, a shrinking workforce is not necessarily a uniquely Chinese problem. Fertility rates have dropped in many advanced economies as their societies have become older and wealthier. Raising a child is expensive in an economy where education and housing is becoming costlier by the year. In China, however, the population trend is more troubling because its economy is directly tied to its large labor pool. Since demographics is the backbone of the Chinese economy, a declining workforce will hurt GDP growth as well as create unforeseen social problems for the country. Somewhere by 2020 and 2030, China's surplus labor pool will dwindle manufacturing wages will go up and the sector will lose its competitive edge, a theory known as the Lewis turning point. As Beijing reaches this milestone, the number of Chinese citizens aged 15 to 24 will number below the replacement level, and China will enter a cycle of unstoppable demographic decline. The Communist Party is not oblivious to these alarming demographic trends. Policymakers in the capital are currently considering their future options and already implementing countermeasures. For instance, in 2013, the government began relaxing the enforcement of the one-child policy, 
It then raised the limit of population control to two children for all families in 2016 in hopes of encouraging a baby boom. It didn't work. There was a brief uptick that year, but the birth rates fell again in 2017 and continued to decline the year after. For China, there will be no baby boom, and the issue seems to be beyond social engineering. Meanwhile, the number of Chinese retirees is expected to rise from 123 million in 2013 to 330 million by 2025. This will not only place a significant strain on the government and its taxpayers, but it will also force the Chinese leadership to reform and expand its social security, of which there is almost none to speak of in terms of elderly care. As a countermeasure, the government is currently considering to lift the national retirement age by five years. But this will merely postpone the social crisis, not resolve it. Eventually, as the number of retirees balloons, the government will need to provide additional resources to meet the needs of the elderly. Now, you might be wondering why can't China just copy the successful social insurance systems of other aging societies? Well, because China's aging process is unprecedented. It has started at an earlier stage of economic development and it is moving at a record-breaking pace. It took Germany and Sweden over 60 years to double the proportions of their elderly populations. Even Japan, the world's oldest country, took 23 years to double its elderly population. China, however, is going to do it in just 20 years, from 2017 to 2037. So, while in 2015 almost 10% of China was aged 65 or older, by 2050 the elderly segment will increase to about 28%. Another key difference between China and other aging nations is that the demographic process is occurring at an earlier stage of its economic development. China is not a high-income nation with the capacity to deal with the financial burdens that come with an aging society. How the state will handle the finances is completely unknown. The pension shortfall is expected to top $130 billion by 2020, while China's current debt is about three times its GDP. These are numbers that are set to surge as the years pass. In 2018, for every retired person, there were 2.8 working taxpayers. By 2050, this ratio will fall to 1.3 taxpayers to 1. With fewer workers in the future, the government will struggle to pay for a population that is living longer, which suggests that the country will get old before it gets rich. The imminent demographic crisis is one of the chief motivators of the Made in China 2025 initiative, which exists of three 10-year plans and seeks to transition the economy to high-end manufacturing, thereby relieving its workforce. However, since both the demographic decline and the economic initiatives are taking place at the same time, it means that the state is racing against the clock. However, not everything is doom and gloom. Today, China is in a far better economic position than it was in the past. In the past three decades, its GDP has climbed from $177 billion to $12.2 trillion. And even though the burden of elderly care will fall on the youth, that younger generation will never want for employment. In the near future, worker shortages will be an issue for the Communist Party, not worker surpluses. That is a problem that modern states are better equipped to handle. From technologies and immigration to imports, there are plenty of advanced solutions to help bridge the gap. So, for the first time in its modern history, China will no longer need to employ the poor at unprofitable jobs. Instead, the state will have the opportunity to better train and prepare its citizens for jobs that will be needed. In demographic studies, it has long been claimed that a society with a declining fertility rate and an aging population is destined for national catastrophe. But this need not be so. That is, if Beijing can prepare the machinery of government ahead of the crisis.
I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. Special thanks to our contributors from Patreon for making original content like this possible. If you want to learn more about our crowdfunding, check out the links below. For now, thank you for your time and Sahol.